We've had this rig about three years. It's grown slowly over time. That's the beautiful thing about building a modular rig. Initially, we had a number of 511 preamps in the studio. That was before you guys came out with the Shelford channel. When the Shelford channel came out, we got about 12 channels of those, and we started using that as the front end for our studio recordings. Later on, we started building this mobile rig, and when we got a chance to hear the uh, RMP D8, we heard something that was more familiar with the Shelfords. Very robust, big sound, and just felt familiar. It, it didn't need a lot of work after the fact. We weren't putting all this energy into the mix, trying to make these mobile recordings sound like studio quality. A lot of that was already there. We'd done recordings in Small's Jazz Club for maybe maybe eight, 10 years, and we we're familiar with what we got out of it. And the first time we dragged these into the basement, the, the recording quality changed. It, things had more life. We weren't having to pump things through outboard as much when it came time to mixing. So a, a lot of the work was sort of done for us in many respects. This rack on the right is primarily the, the brain of the whole operation. Um, here we have a Dante interface. We've got our switch. We've got a hard disk recorder backup. If you're rolling up to a venue and they're just trying to record something digital, you only need this one case. Most of the time, we're expected to have some sort of preamp front end. So the Rupert Neve racks let us choose our input and output for the uh, particular gig. And so you'll do, if you only need like a 16 channel rig, you just have this top guy and then you've got double that on the bottom. Exactly, most gigs will just take this 32 channel rack with the interface rack and we're good to go. We get to the gig, it plugs in with one ethernet cable and all of our inputs are automatically routed through the uh, Dante controller. This is the 32 channel, and if we wanted to add 16 more, that's super easy. And if we wanted to add 32 more inputs on the analog rack, that's another option. Again, this rack hooking up to the interface rack, that's one ethernet cable. So when we get to a gig, we've tested the rack beforehand, everything's wired inside the racks. We're not there messing around with snakes, worrying about dead channels from their analog snake box, anything like that. We get there, we plug in two ethernet cables, and we've got 64 channels of analog recording immediately. Wow.